help but have this question. Because that's the only way you can tell that what I'm telling you is in fact the truth, is to have been there and experienced it. Otherwise, it's all in your intellect, without experience. It's not personal. It's just something you heard, and there's no way you can tell whether it's breakthrough or delusion until you learn to go there and experience it. Most of us, again, that do experience it, we agree pretty much on what's there. It's not that everybody disagrees. Most everybody who goes does agree. You just have to cut through all the various kinds of expression. Leo Lee, you know, he was in, it was 2,600 years ago. He figured it out. He was there, you know. He knew what he was talking about. All right, um, how, do you, how do you go about it? Well, you have to kind of get off your seat and get up and do it. You don't know whether the pudding recipe is good or whether the pudding itself is good unless you taste it. You've got to get involved. If you read my books, you can ask questions. Does what you learn there match with the physical world? When I talk about the physics there, does it match with your own experience, your own subjective experience? You are the world's greatest expert on your own experience. Maybe the only thing you're the world's greatest expert on, but you are the greatest expert on your own personal experience. And if, these, if you have experiences, if you've been traveling around in a par and do paranormal things, or whatever, these books will explain that to you, and you'll recognize it. And you'll suddenly understand, oh, that's what's been happening to me, and that's why, because it'll all make sense to you. So match your own experience. And everybody, who, whether you do paranormal things or not, everybody has a you know, subjective life. Does what these books tell you about your subjective life, is it true? Is that the way your subjective life runs? Well, you, know, you can find that out. What this is really about is your big toe. I called the book My Big Toe because I wanted to make the point that it can't be your big toe until you experience it. You have to get out there and experience it. Otherwise, it's just something that your intellect knows about. So the bottom line is find out. Remember, you have to be skeptical. I don't want you to leave here believing what I say any more than I want you to leave here disbelieving what I say. Neither one is productive. Neither one is useful. Neither will take you anywhere important. I want you to leave here committed to find out, to discover big truth for yourself. That's how you grow. Growth is your purpose, your mission. It's your responsibility. Let my big toe be the catalyst for your big toe. Because in the end, that's more the purpose of this lecture and these books than just telling you what reality is all about. Well, that's basically the end of what I've got. If you're interested in finding out more, there are books over here that are inexpensive because you don't have to pay for them to be shipped all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. They were brought over in suitcases, so uh, you know, they, were, they were free for shipping. Um, you can go to the discussion. This is the website. There's a discussion group where other people that, who are reading, have read, get up and, and talk about things that interest them. Um, the charts will be available. These videos will be available. It'll all be free. Uh, it'll be on my website. Uh, Vaz will have it at the uh, uh, college. And uh, books you can get. You can buy them at the website, but they'll have to be shipped. You can get them through Amazon. You can get them through Barnes & Noble online. You can go to your favorite bookstore and ask them to order them. There's an international uh, distributor, Baker & Taylor, that distributes them all over. So that's how you can get more information. All right, that gets us to the questions and how are we doing on, on time. Okay, we, we have about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Sorry I took some of your questions. It's a lot to get through. All right, who's got a question? Yes, sir. Um, did you say that our emotions are a measure or, or signify of our state of conscious entropy? Uh, emotions? Well, yes and no. You know, emotions can be, uh, aren't all disruptive. Some emotions, obviously, uh, can be disruptive of your consciousness, but all are not that way. Emotions are more... Uh, feedback for us. It's kind of that, that uh, meter that you'd like to have of whether or not you are learning, whether or not you're, you're doing the right thing. Um, if your emotions, if your feelings are good, 
If they're loving emotions, if they're encompassing emotions, if it's emotions that are caring, then you're probably on the right track. If your emotions are disturbing, unsettling, frightening, um, disheveled, you know, high entropy in the sense that there's you know, a lot of random energy in it, then you're obviously on the wrong track. So the fact that we have emotions is one of our best feedbacks. When you do something, when you get angry and spout something off and you're feeling also this emotion, that's a feedback telling you that you're on the wrong trail. Our emotions are our first feedback. So that's typically what the emotions do for us. They, they kind of tell us whether we're heading in the right direction or not. All right, other question. Yes, sir. And the theory um, is fascinating, but the practicality of it seems to be about um, meditation. Uh, and are there any particular meditation techniques that you would recommend? There are hundreds of them. There are hundreds of them, and whichever one suits you is the best one. And I talk about them in my book. I lay out I think, like, um, you know, if you do all the different combinations in there, there's like 20 or 30 different ways to approach it. But it needs to suit the individual. And what most of the meditation techniques do, they're not necessary to meditate, but they help you meditate because to meditate you have to let all the jabber go. You have to let all the, the constant thoughts go. And a process that helps you do this, it's just a tool, meditation is just a tool, is to fill your mind with something that pushes the thoughts away. That's the idea of the mantra. So you keep the mantra in your mind. As long as your mind's filled up with that mantra, it's not thinking about other things. And when that mantra disappears and little thoughts come in, you just put the thoughts aside gently, go back to it. Well, the, the mantra is just fluff. It's just stuff to push the thoughts away. Eventually, when you develop your conscious control enough to the point that you don't need that mantra to keep those thoughts away, let go of the mantra. It's not useful anymore. There's nothing magic or sacred about the mantra. You can make up mantras. It's not hard to make up. It's just a thing that lets you keep thoughts at bay. You can do that by watching, you know, by let your eyes trace a mandala. It's another way. You can do it by listening to music. You can do that by seeing lights in different patterns. You can bring up an image in your mind of something that will concentrate. Here's one. You can, you can bring up an image of a soccer ball, you know, because soccer balls have those nice white and black spots and look at that soccer ball, then rotate the soccer ball quickly at first, and then slow it down, slow it down, and hold it, and you'll see, because you're so preoccupied with that soccer ball, all the rest of your thoughts are gone. Well, in the end, you want to let the soccer ball go too. But it's a tool, just like a mantra, to push the extraneous thoughts out of your mind. It's a training to get rid of those thoughts. But yes, meditation is very good, and there's a hundred ways to do it, and they're all valid. Some people like one better than other. I'd say try as many as you need to till you find something that works with you. Another question? Yes, ma'am? Are we moving towards a time where we all have a lower energy consciousness? Um, yes and no. <laughs> the bad news is it's not just going to happen without you earning it. You don't get lower entropy and your consciousness does not just suddenly grow up because you're in that grow-up cosmic cycle. It doesn't work like that. I know there's a lot of that out in the literature, but you don't get it for free. There's no free lunch here. You have to develop it. You have to grow up, and that has to be from the inside out. So no, there's not going to be like one day we'll all wake up and be enlightened. Won't happen. Doesn't work that way. That's not the point of what's going on here. But the good news is that yes, we're all striving. We're all working on it. All the beings in all of those realities are all working on it. Entropy is being decreased little tiny increments at a time by lots of people.